History of Flight During the 1500s, Leonardo da Vinci filled pages of his notebooks with the sketches of proposed flying machines, but most of his ideas were flawed because he clung to the idea of bird-like wings. He called these as ornithopter wings. By 1655, mathematician, physicist, and inventor Robert Hooke concluded the human body does not possess the strength to power artificial wings. In 1783, Joseph and Aiden Montgolfer invented the first man hot air balloon which flew for 33 minutes. Ten days later, after first man hot air balloon, Professor Jacques Charles flew the first gas balloon. In 1843, William Samuel Hanson designed a huge monoplane that was propelled by a steam engine housed inside a fuselage. In 1852, a British aviator and quote unquote the father of aerial navigation, Sir George Cayley, believed the study of flights unlocked the secrets of winged flight. He spent his 84 years see seeking to develop a heavier than air vehicle supported by kite shaped wings, which is called glider. In 1895, Otto Lilienthal proved human flight in aircraft heavier than air was practical and worked toward the dream of powered flight. In 1903, Wilbur and Orville Wright, or the Wright brothers, had experimented for four years with kites. Let's go to lift and basic aerodynamics. There are four forces acting upon an aircraft in relation to straight and level and accelerated flight. These forces are thrust, lift, weight, and drag. Thrust is the forward force produced by the power plant or propeller. Drag is a reward, retarding force and caused by disruption of airflow by the wing, fuselage, and other producing objects. Weight is the combined load of the airplane itself, fuel, the crew, and the cargo or baggage. Weight pulls the airplane downward because of the force of gravity. Lift opposes the downward force of weight and is produced by the dynamic effect of the air acting on the wing. An aircraft moves in three dimensions and is controlled by moving it about one or more of its axes. The first one is the longitudinal or roll axis. Extends through the aircraft from nose to tail with the line passing through the G CG or center of gravity. Second is the lateral or pitch axis. It extends across the aircraft on a line through the wingtips again, passing through the CG or central of gravity. And the last is the vertical or yaw axis. It passes through the aircraft vertically insert, intersecting the CG. CG or the center of gravity. The CG of a body is the theoretical point at which the entire weight of that body is assumed to be concentrated. The point at which aircraft will balance, it is what the aircraft moves around. The position of the CG of an aircraft determines the stabil stability of the aircraft in flight. As the CG moves reward or towards the tail, the aircraft becomes more and more dy dynamically unstable. Now let's go to major components of an aircraft. There are five major components of an aircraft. The first component is the fuselage. It is the central of an airplane and is designed to accommodate the crew, passengers, and cargo. It also provides the structural connection for the wings and tail assembly. This picture is a truss type fuselage structure. The second component is the wings. These are airfoils attached to each side of the fuselage and are the main lifting surfaces that support the air airplane in flight. There are numerous wing designs, sizes, and shapes used by the various manufacturers. The number of wings can also vary. Airplanes with a single set of wings are referred to as monoplanes, while those with two sets are called biplanes. Many high-wing airplanes have external braces or wing struts. Many high-wing airplanes have external braces or wing struts which transmit the flight and landing loads through the struts to the main fuselage structure. 
since the wing struts are usually attached approximately halfway out of the mm, since the wing struts are usually attached approximately since the wing struts are usually attached approximately halfway out on the wing this type of wing structure is called semi cantilever a few high wing and most low wing airplanes have a full cantilever wing design to carry the loads without external struts principal structure parts of the wing are spars ribs and stingers the ribs determine the shape and thickness of the wing spar carries flight loads and the weight of the wing while on the ground stingers run span wise and attach between the ribs their purpose is to serve as as a structural components that transfer loads and stresses attached to the rear or trailing edges of the wings are two types of control surfaces such as ailerons and flaps aileron extends from about the midpoint of each wing outward toward the tip and move in opposite direction to create aerodynamic forces that cause the airplane to roll flaps extend outward from the fuselage to near the midpoint of each wing when extended the flaps move simultaneously downward to increase the lifting force of the wing for takeoffs and landings the third component is the empennage it, it includes the entire tail group and consists of fixed surfaces such as the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizer the movable surfaces includes the rudder, the elevator, and one or more trim tabs. Rudder is attached to the back of the vertical stabilizer. During flight, it is used to move the airplane's nose left and right. Elevator is attached to the back of horizontal stabilizer. It is used to move the nose of the airplane up and down during flight. Trim tabs is a small movable portion of the trailing edge of the control surface. These movable trim tabs, which are controlled from the flight deck, reduce control pressures. Trim tabs may be installed on the ailerons, the rudder, and or the elevator. The fourth component is the landing gear. It is the principal support of the airplane when parked, taxiing, taking off or landing. The most common type of landing gear consists of wheels, but airplanes can also be equipped with floats for water operations or skis for landing on snow. The landing gear consists of three wheels, two main wheels and a third wheel positioned either at the front or rear of the plane. Conventional landing gear. Airplanes with conventional landing gear are sometimes referred to as tail wheel airplanes. Tricycle gear. Airplanes with tricycle gear are sometimes referred as nose wheel airplane. The fifth component or the last component is the power plant. It is usually includes both the engine and the propeller. The primary function of the engine is to provide the power to turn the propeller. The engine is covered by a cooling or a nacelle, which are both types of covered housings. The purpose of cowling or nasal is to streamline the flow of air around the engine and to help cool the engine by ducting air around the cylinders. The propeller mounted on the front of the engine translates the rotating forces of the engine into thrust, a forward ducting force that helps move the airplane through the air, the propeller may also be mounted on the gear of the engine as in a pusher type aircraft. 